So we'll get into that in more detail. But if you're in high, high cost of living states like California and New York, for example, then it's quite likely that even a, you know, a, an average home could push you over to itemizing. But if you're, if you're in an area where you don't have as high cost of living areas, you might see situations still where you're purchasing a home and people uh, are, are still taking the standard deduction because it's fairly high and they're not taking on as big a loan uh, with the standard deduction or paying as much of the property taxes in that case. So in practice then, the general idea that we wanna keep in mind with the standard and itemized deductions, we wanna have an idea of what the standard deductions are, when people might itemize, what kind of things push people over from the standard to itemizing, usually purchasing a home is, is the big one and and uh, when that you know when that might take place so we can explain that to clients and then determine when it would be worthwhile for us to compile the added information of the itemized deductions because we think it's it could possibly clear the threshold of the standard deduction okay so we're down here on line 12 standard deduction or itemized deduction note that the normal standard deductions that we talked about in the past are on the left side of the form so we have the single filer at the 12950, doubling that to the 259 head of household at the 194. We'd have to clear those thresholds before it would be beneficial for us to take the itemized deductions. The itemized deductions then would be populated on the Schedule A. So here's a Schedule A. This is the itemized deductions, and we won't we don't have the full Schedule A here, but these are the items you can see on the left hand side if you go to the Schedule A and you can look at the medical expenses, taxes interest and so on and so forth we'll dive into each of those or in more more detail at least most of them so these are the the uh the standard deductions which you want to be able to keep in mind because these are the hurdles that you need to clear so if someone is nowhere near clearing these hurdles then you can be quite certain you're just going to take the standard deduction fairly easy so this is from the left side of the tax return that we saw before right here and so that's going to be the single uh, is going to be the 12,950 married you double that so you might just want to memorize 12,950 double it to 259 head of households in the middle between those two 194 those are the general the general hurdles so if you have a single filer and you're like you, they're nowhere near having itemized deductions up to 12,950 you're fairly close you're fairly sure they're going to be taking just the standard deduction 25,900 fairly large number married for the married couple uh so if they're nowhere near that you could say okay they're just going to take the the standard uh deduction and then we have these these added components if they were over 65 or blind or both so so in those situations we up the standard deductions for those particular situations and that's what this table is doing on the right all right itemized deductions use schedule a form 1040 to figure your itemized deductions in most cases your federal income tax will be less if you take the larger of your itemized deduction or your standard deduction so we're going to figure the two if the itemized deductions are greater we'll typically do that one obviously tax software is kind of useful to do these calculations because it'll help us to determine what the best tax benefit situation uh, would be but if we're nowhere near the itemized deduction, it might not be worth compiling all the data uh, related to it because we're just going to take the standard deduction. So if you itemize, you can deduct a part of your medical and dental expenses and amounts you paid for certain taxes, interest, contributions, and other expenses. So these are the categorizations. We'll dive into each of these categories, most of them at least, in more detail. You can also deduct certain casualty and theft losses. So if you and your spouse paid expenses jointly and are filing separate returns for 2022, see publication 504 to figure the portion of joint expenses that you can claim as itemized deductions. Caution, don't include Schedule A items deducted elsewhere, such as Form 1040, 1040SR, or Schedule C, E, or F. Now this gets a little bit messy because you can imagine situations where a deduction might have been included on a Schedule C or a Schedule E, and you can't, what I would call double dip. You can't take two deductions for the same thing. You can't say, I paid this much for this thing and I'm gonna deduct it over here like I paid mortgage interest or whatever and I deducted it on 
the Schedule E, and then I'm also going to deduct it on the Schedule A. That would be double dipping. You paid the one amount, you don't get two benefits from it. So oftentimes we have to then think, where would we get the best benefit or where does that particular deduction most properly uh, belong? And we might have to allocate something like a mortgage interest or something. We have a mortgage, a reverse mortgage, paid off mortgage to where it properly would be would would be along a schedule c schedule e and schedule a so we'll get into some of that those issues what's new mortgage interest premium the election to deduct qualified mortgage mortgage i'm sorry mortgage insurance premium the election to deduct qualified mortgage uh, insurance premiums you paid under mortgage insurance contract issued after december 31st 2006 uh, in connection with a home acquisition debt that was secured by your first or second home doesn't apply for tax years beginning after December 31st, 2021. Then we have the charitable contributions for non-itemers, itemizers. So the election to claim a charitable contribution for taxpayers who do not itemize their deductions expired December 31st, 2021. So it's kind of interesting, a few years ago, they increased the standard deduction to try to simplify the tax codes because now more people can just take the standard deduction instead of doing the itemized deductions. But you can kind of predict what's going to happen when they try to simplify the code like that because a lot of the favorite categories that were in the itemized deductions no longer have as much influence. So you can see, for example, with the charitable deductions, they kind of seeped over out of the itemized deductions on the Schedule A, allowing charitable deductions actually on the first page of uh, the Form 1040. So that was kind of an interesting development. But now that has expired, so now that has been removed again. So if you're going to take the charitable deductions, they're going to have to be taken on the itemized deductions. It'll be kind of interesting going forward because once again, as it currently stands, the standard deduction is making the itemized deductions, those special categories, less relevant than they were in the past. So we might see more laws in the future trying to make some of those items more relevant by possibly putting them somewhere else outside of the Schedule A or possibly attempting to lower back down uh, the standard deduction to make those itemized components more relevant. This is kind of like the push and pull that we end up seeing with the tax code. So in any case, health coverage tax credit. The health coverage tax credit has expired. If you are a trade adjustment assistance, a TAA recipient, an alternative TAA, which is an ATAA recipient, a, a reemployment TAA, which is an RTAA recipient, or a pension benefit guarantee corporation, which is a PBGC payee, then you will no longer use Form 8885 before completing Schedule A Line 1. Then we have the standard mileage rates. Now note, when we think about the standard mileage rates, the first thing that usually comes to most people's mind is for applicability to the Schedule C, but there's different rates depending on what your mileage is for. We're talking here for medical reasons because it's being applied to the Schedule A. So the standard mileage rate allowed for operating expenses for a car when you use it for medical reasons increased to 18 cents a mile for January 1st through June 30th, 2022 and 22 cents a mile from July 1st through December 31st, 2022. So those could differ then from other uh, standard mileage rates you might use for other reasons. Obviously, we've got this difference in the middle of the year that complicates things. Uh, if you're trying to calculate that standard mileage rate, note that the software is often helpful for those types of calculations. So the 2022 rate for use of your vehicles uh, to do volunteer work for certain charitable organizations remains at 14 cents a mile. So they haven't been like increasing these as steadily as they generally do for like the mileage rates for uh, a business like the schedule. C uh, mileage rates if you are applying mileage rates for for vehicle use related to uh, a business a sole proprietorship which we'll talk about in a separate section when we do the schedule c discussions